Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In the last video, I went over using MySQL with the HTML that I already set up, and I also tied in PHP and JavaScript. I had some questions about the installation of XAMPP, and I installed it on a local machine this past week, and I had an error pop up too, so I don't know if Windows is having an issue. You may not have any issue if you're using Linux or another operating system, but since I ran into this issue, I thought I'd make this quick video and just go over the steps and then the error message I got. Now you go to this um, website, apachefriends.org forward slash download dot HTML. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to go to this. And then when you hit the download page, you have to download the one that best suits your operating system. The one that I downloaded was the 8.2.4. Now this message I just went OK on. I don't really care. I install it in the root directory under C colon XAMPP, and I put everything in that directory so it's not part of any of the documents, like in the program files. And then here, I check everything. I go ahead and install all the stuff, even though I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use Tomcat or a mail server. I just put it in there because, and who knows, maybe someday I will use it. I used Tomcat years ago for something, and I can't even remember what it's for. And then you can see here, I'm not doing it in the program files. I'm doing it in the uh, XAMPP directory under the SQL and the root directory. And then it also, I'm putting every step in here, so you have to select the language. And then it asks you to confirm. And then you just sit and wait for it to install. And then firewall was blocking it, so I just said allow access. But I check both of these boxes. Because this, like I said in the previous video, this isn't going to be on the internet for me, so it really doesn't matter. But even if I'm doing it on this machine that you see now, which is on the internet, I still just allow access. And you can see here, I put another slide where I checked it. And then I went ahead and started the control panel. You can go to the control panel in Windows in the Windows Start menu. You can find it by scrolling down to ZAMP, and then you open the control menu. And this is what the control panel looks like. And for our case, we're going to be starting Apache and MySQL. And I tried to start them right here. And I got this error that this VC runtime wasn't around. And I looked it up, and all you have to do is uninstall something and then reinstall a newer version. And to uninstall, you go over here to the control panel, and you run uninstall a program. And in this case, it's this. Visual C++ redistrib redistributable. And note it here that it's 14.28 and then some other. And you'll see that the new version is different. And what I thought was funny was I uninstalled it, but it said setup is successful. And then you have to go and download the new version. And I'll put a link to that also in the website. And then you have to pick the one that best suits your Windows machine. I'm pretty sure this is the one I got. And you can see it's VC underscore redistrib X64. And then you just right click and reinstall it. And it was 14.28 and now it's 14.34. And now this time, since I started it, since it was closed and I had to restart it, I also rebooted the computer. I don't know if I needed to do that or not. But I, I started it from the Windows Start menu. And when I started it, I right-clicked on it, and I ran it as administrator. And when you run this as administrator, this side over here shows these red Xs. And if you click them, you have the option of installing these as services, and then they'll start up when you start the computer. Now, you don't have to do this. I do this because I want it to start immediately, so I don't have to go in here and start it every time. But if you're not going to run this very often, then you might not want it to start every time because it does take resources in the computer. 
and you can always open the control panel and start it each individual time by clicking these buttons over here. But I, I go ahead and click each one of these. And when I click this top one, it asks me to confirm that I want to set that up. And then you can see now it's got a green check mark. And then I check the next one. And once again, it asks me if I want to start MySQL as a service. And now after I've done this, if I reboot, it will be running in the back. And you can see that we have both the green check marks now. And now if you open whatever browser you want on your PC and you type in localhost forward slash and hit enter, it should change it to the dashboard and open a page that looks like this. I've just clipped the corner because this is how you start that PHP My Admin, which I went through in the last video. And when you click on it, you get a screen that looks like this, which should be familiar if you've watched the last video. And here's where you can create new databases and play with uh, MySQL in a GUI rather than using the command line. And then you can see in this PC under my C drive, which is the root drive, I have the XAMPP folder right here. And then in that folder, there's an htdocs folder. And that's where the website goes. So for every folder that you place in here, that's a local website. And so what I did in the htdocs is I created a test folder and then I created a new text document by right clicking and creating a new document and I called it index.html. And I'm going to open it and put some code in it, but it's really index.html.txt because it's hiding that the extension name. When I open the folder, all I'm putting in it is hello world. Nothing else, no html coding, no nothing, just the text hello world and so then I go back to that local host forward slash but I put test folder forward slash and it takes me to that directory where I have that that name but it doesn't recognize it as a web file because it has that dot txt on it so you can see index.html.txt so if you go to the folder this test folder and click view up here you have this options over here. And when you click on options, if you go to the view under that, the folder options, if you go down here, I always click this hidden folders and files. I click it to show hidden files, folders, and drives. And then down here where it says hide extensions for known file types, I uncheck that. And you can see I've made the changes here. And then I hit apply and OK. And now you can see it shows the whole thing, whereas before it was just showing HTML. And so then I got rid of the .txt, and now it's saying, do you want to change that? It might mess things up. Well, I want to change it, so yes. And now it shows up, and you can see it even identifies it as an Edge document, because I have Edge set as my default browser in here. And now when I go to localhost test folder, I've got hello world. So if you had problems with video 197, hopefully this helps you get set up and configured for that. That test folder that we did in 196 needs to be moved into the XAMPP htdocs directory, and then you should work after that. And once again, if you have any questions, head over to Cheap Controls. There is a help section over there where you can submit it in a comment form. I get to the help requests as, as quickly as I can. Now next week, I'll get back into this and I'll have the Python video that's tied to the MySQL. And then that, that video, once again, isn't a whole lot of fun and it's still more of a reference video. But the video after that one, I should start collecting data and populating it on the screen. And I think that's when it'll get a lot more fun. And I'll, you'll probably be watching this video after you've watched that one if you have any problems with that one. A lot of people that watch these probably are very familiar with XAMPP and HTML and CSS and all that stuff, and they may want to just see how do I tie it into a Keysight device or how do I tie it to an Arduino. I'm still not sure which direction I'm going to go first. Um, tying it into a Keysight device could be interesting because that's a data acquisition. It's kind of like a multimeter with a bunch of different channels. 
and we can measure a lot of things very precisely with that. Some people that watch my channel are just heavily into the Nexion and the Arduino, and they might be more interested in how do I access the Arduino directly from Python. So I'll think about that and see. I'll probably have one video on each, and depending on the comments I get or the messages I get, will probably make me go one direction or the other. But I will be doing a video on both because I'll need them for my for an actual project I'm working on. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.